Hello everyone, welcome back to another session of admin course. So till the previous session, we saw how to create a custom object and custom fields in Salesforce. In this one, we are just going to explore a few more field data types. So in the last one, we only saw how to create a number field and how to create a text field, I believe. So in this one, we are going to check out like, you know, uh, most of the data types that are available. So you will have a clear idea on like, you know, what kind of data type you would be selecting in order to create like, you know, uh, depending on the field that you want to create. All right. So let's just go to the org. And before I actually get started, we, if you remember, we talked about creating a tab, right, for the employee object. So let's just go ahead and do that first so that I can uh, actually show you on the UI that how the <clears throat> current UI for employee record looks like. So let's just go ahead and create the tab. So here uh, you need to search for tab. <clears throat> and we need to create, create a new tab. So the object would be employee. And here you need to select a style. So let's say this one and we'll keep it default as on and visible for all the profiles. And let's just click on save. The last screen was to select the apps where we wanted to make it available. So if you only want your employee tab to be available only for specific profiles, you can do that. For now, I just, if you saw that I just like, you know, uh, kept everything selected and I proceeded. So it's going to be available for everyone. So now if I actually go here and check for employee. So here, now you can see that I can see the employee tab. <clears throat> so now here, if we actually right now, if we go ahead and try to create an employee record, so you can see, right, these are the fields that we created, right? Uh, this was the standard employee name field. So it is coming here, then employee ID, position and salary. So these were the three fields that we created. Owner comes by default and employee name is, if you see this red asterisk, right? This is this shows that this field is required. You cannot actually create a record without filling in this field. So as this was a standard field, right? So any custom object that you would be creating in Salesforce that is going to have this name field, uh, standard name field by default, and it is always required. Okay. So there are two things that you can actually do this, uh, do with this number field. This number field comes by default as a text data type, but you can also convert it into auto number, but we are not going to make any changes to the standard field. So let's just like, you know, uh, keep the agenda in mind and proceed with that. So I'm not going to make any changes, but I just wanted to show you that these are the three fields that we created. And this one is the standard field right now we'll go ahead and create few more fields uh like you know which has different data types field data types so let me go to the object manager so you need to go to the object manager and search for your object that you have created so object manager employee so fields and relationships and new so let's just see what are the data types and then we can keep on like, you know, uh, selecting. So I will start with a checkbox. Okay. So let me create a checkbox as like, you know, uh, keeping the information if the employee is active or not. Okay. So is employee active. Okay. And by default, I'm keeping it as unchecked, right? I'm not like, you know, by default, not keeping it as checked. So whenever you create an employee record until unless you actually check that checkbox, it is not going to be checked, right? So by default, it is going to be false. So next. And I'm going to make this checkbox field visible for all the profiles that are there in the system. And this also includes the system admin profile, which my user currently has the one which I'm logged in with. So I'm just keeping it visible for all the profiles. Next. And then we'll click on save and new because we are going to create another field. So we saw checkbox currency we have already created. We already created a field of uh, for, for salary, right? So now let's just go ahead with date. Here we can create a field for like, you know, date of joining. If I want to know like, you know, when the 
like you know employee actually started working so date of joining and then next so this particular field is going to give us the calendar so that like you know we can actually select a joining date for the employee make it visible save and new okay so i'm not going to create any field with this one date and time but date date is only going to show you the date but in date and time along with the date the time can also be entered okay that is the only difference and then let's just also like you know there is also a data type available for email so we'll just go ahead and create a field for email right employees email the difference like you know you can also select a text and create it as an email field but the good thing about selecting the data type as email let's say if somebody is trying to enter the employee details and they are not putting a like you know proper email without at the rate right so it will be able to identify and it will actually throw the message that they are not entering a valid email right so that's that's the difference between choosing the email data type rather than actually selecting a text data type and creating a field for email okay so next and save and new so here we are the location we are not selecting number we already selected for uh, employee id right and then percent is like you know let's say if you are selecting if you if you have to create any field which requires to enter a value in percentage then you can select the data type as percent for phone entering the phone number you can select the data type as phone so this will give you in that format like you know plus 1 or plus 9 2 or whatever right so that is the benefit of using the phone as data type otherwise again you can use number as well so here i'm going to just use it as phone or we can also keep it as mobile okay <clears throat> let's check out the next one phone pick list we already created multi-select pick list is so the pick list that we have created right so here if i show you you can select only one value right but if i create a data type of multi-select pick list value i would be able to select two values two or like you know more than one or more than one value like you know multiple values you can actually select right in multi-select so we are not going to create that uh text you can create text area the only difference is that like you know the text is only going to provide you the it it has only a limit up to uh 255 characters or no sorry 255 for text area so the the difference is like you know in the limit of the characters that you can enter right so as per for example let's say if you are only want to create a text field only like you know to put like a one liner note or something then text is going to like you know work properly but let's say if you are creating a field for description and like you know if um if your uh, data requires if the description is going to be very long then you can like you know as per the requirement or as per the estimation that like you know how long the description could be you can select any of these record types okay so i think i think it's it's good enough let's just go ahead and create a record and then see how it looks okay all right and these these fields right lookup relationship or master detail relationship or these ones like you know i would be covering in a separate session because this will take a little more time to understand that like you know i mean just creating the field is not enough but also to understand that how it actually works and how it connects to different objects that is also important that is why i would be creating a separate session for this one and also a separate session on the formula field all right so let's just go ahead with the let me now click on new and we should be able to see other fields that we just created let me refresh the page all right so here they are right so employee name let's just enter anything employee id i'm just going to enter it as one and position let's say developer salary let's say anything and then is employee active date of joining i can select so let's say 2019 something and then email you can select anything like you know at 
anything that is in that at the rate uh, Gmail format, phone number, you can enter anything for now. And then let's just click on save. So here it is, right? So now if you see, this is how you're like, you know, we were talking about table, right? So this is how you can actually store data. So now let's say like, you know, your the company has like, you know, 1200 or 2000 employees, no matter how many employees are there, everybody's detail can be like, you know, entered into the employee uh, object, right? And just by seeing the employee object, right i would be able to figure out how many employees are there and by like you know seeing the information i would be able to figure out other details right for example what is the salary if the employee is active or not when did the employee join and such details right and depending on your requirements you can add extra fields for example let's say if somebody asks me that like you know i also want to know even though i have entered the date of joining let's say if somebody asks that like you know i also want to see that like you know what is the number of years of experience that employee has, right? So number of years of experience is going to be either in one digit or two digit, right? I mean, nobody will have a number of experience in three digits, right? So you can create a number field and you can name it as number of years of experience, right? So as per your requirement and as per the kind of data that it will be uh, faded into, you can create the like, you, know, you can choose the data type and you can create that field, all right? So this was all about, um, uh, like you know the basic field data types that we have in salesforce and you can like you know use it the other ones that i just told you that i would be covering those in a separate session i will be creating another video for the just to cover the formula data type so that like you know you will be you will have more understanding that when to select this and how it will work right because i'll also explain like you know taking few use cases that how it works and not just creating a normal formula field right and then we will also talk about like, you know, in detail about lookup relationship and master master detail relationship. All right. So that's that's all for now. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next session.